Welcome to everybody from around the world. We're here in Cologne, Germany to continue the round of 32. Lots of noise here in the studios. Welcome. This is the WCS. This is the Premier League. Joining me is, of course, a multiple time caster now, is Jared Pig. As some of you may know, welcome back to the WCS, my friends. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. Cologne's starting to feel like a second home. So. You've been here a lot now recently. Yeah. And uh, more to come over these next couple of days. And also joining us for the first time is the more recently retired professional gamer, Sam, uh, also known as Bling for you guys back home. Welcome to the WCS on the other side. Yeah, thank you. Great to be here. Obviously, a full uh, table or desk of Brits. Yes. I think. We're going to class pig as a Brit. Former, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we kind of rejected you guys and you all kind of realized Australia was the better place to be, but yeah. <laughs> you do have that luxury of a, a wonderful country to live in, but of course we have the accent overall. Uh, moving forward now, thank you very much, gentlemen. Let's take a look at the tournament structure. Of course, we are here to continue the World Championship Series Round of 32, as you've already been following, I would imagine. The Round of 32 groups A, B, C, and D have completed in the Burbank, California studios. Over there it was completed with Rotti and Nate, and of course, Chobra. Now we're in Cologne to continue and finish the Round of 32 before moving to the season finals, which is going to Poland. The Round of 16 will be taking the 16 best players to play at the season finals. And of course, we'll move on to the bracket stage when we get to the top eight, where we will once again crown another WCS champion. We've had Polt, we've had Hydra. Who is next this season? It's going to be interesting to follow. Let's take a look at the prize pool as well while we're talking about it, because there's a lot of money up for grabs. $30,000 goes to first place. All what it would be to be a first place finisher within the World Championship Series. Scales all the way down to $4,500, which is what every single player has made playing it into the Premier League. And you guys have had the pleasure of receiving in the past. And of course, goes up to a juicy $6,000 if you make the round of 16. A lot of, a lot of money within the WCSM. Yeah, uh, wish it, wish I could still make it. <laughs> to be honest, now I'm here. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. There is a lot of money. There's a lot of pride on the line at the same time. And I think uh, this group in particular, actually, I don't think they care about the money just as much. No, they're they're more so about the WCS points, which we can take a closer look at. As of course, that is the backbone of the World Championship Series. First place in the world is, of course, Hero, who has been for quite a while now, and recently climbing into the top 16, overtaking SOS is TY, who, if the global finals at BlizzCon were to happen tomorrow, would play. But of course, there's still a season left to go. And as you can see in the bottom parts now, are the players that are competing in the next four days, and the ones highlighted are the ones competing today. Lilbo up there as the highest ranked player out of the 16 that we've got here today, Jared, oh, over the next couple of days. Yeah, Lilbo's, he's got a lot of points. Uh, he's still a bit far outside of that top 16. There's a big gap, but when you look at how many points there are in the World Championship Series, like a very good run here definitely puts him in the running. And I know a lot of players say like, oh, I don't want to focus too much. I don't want to put too much pressure, but he's been saying, I want it. I want to go there. So I think he's got his heart set on coming out first place in this group. Yeah, there's a couple of players with Lilbo that if they were to win the tournament, to win the season, would be playing at BlizzCon, would jump right up there. But of course, that is a long way away. We're only here in the round of 32, and we can take a look at those groups. As mentioned, we have already completed four, and here are the players that are playing in the season finals. Paul Petraeus, Hydra, Elfie, Jadong Sen, Marine Lord, and Igers will compete at the season finals, and the eight players to make it out from the ESL studios over there. And now is E, F, G, and H. Today we'll be starting in group E, tomorrow F, the next day, G, and the final day on Friday, where TLO will play, will have Group H. So a wonderful set of players there. Sam, what player stands out the most for the ones that we're going to be seeing over the next couple of days? It's got to be TLO. And I'm not just saying that to please the German <laughs> crowd here, but I feel like it's his time. It's, it's been well overdue. It's the last Heart of the Swarm series for the WCS series, and uh, yeah. I think it's time. He's going to do it. All right, well, uh, on uh, Friday, we'll definitely have to check to see if Bling's player can, can perform, but is there one for you as well that, that stands I, out? I mean, TLO is always great to watch, but personally, as someone who ladders on the North American ladder a lot, I am looking forward to finding out who Hitman is, <laughs> what he is like in person. Who is he? He's been a mystery for a long time. He's been stealing my ladder points. He's been stealing everyone's ladder points, and now he's finally here in Premier League, so we're going to see him in just two days' time. Confirmed he is 
playing in Cologne, Germany, and we'll be here very shortly. We'll be playing over the next couple of days. Uh, if you are interested, by the way, in playing some Fantasy League, then uh, join below with the link just kind of down there somewhere and sign up, join in, and see how you rate against some of the other players and other competitors that are playing within the Fantasy League. And of course, check the ranking and compare yourself. You may be not as good as predictions as me, but you can seriously try your best. Boys, it's time to start thinking now about Group E. We've got four fantastic players. Let's introduce them. Lilbo, Shanna, Kung Fu Panda, and Neeb are the four players that will be opening up the week here in Cologne, Germany. Let's talk about the group as a whole here. So, we, first of all, is this Lilbo? I mean, Lilbo season finalist from the previous season. That's the one thing that stands out the most there. Is it, a, is it a battle for the other three to kind of grab a second place? Is it that simple that Lilbo should be first place and everyone else second fighting for that? It's a bit of a mystery. I mean, Lilbo definitely stands out as that guy who recently has been doing so well. He was last season's runner-up. But I think Gung Fu Banda recently, especially last season, is starting to make a reputation for himself. And especially because we've got a group with three Protosses. He's a Protoss specialist, a PvP specialist. I think he's got a good shot of, of doing something, you know, surprising. And I think the real wild cards, though, obviously we've got, you know, Neeb, and then we've got Shana from China. Mm. And there's not a lot of match history when you bring these people from different continents they complete, compete in different leagues. So I think we're going to see some clashing of styles. And for me, what excites me the most is that Neeb and Shana have both swapped from the opposite races <laughs> in the past yeah. 12 months. They've actually, Shana was Protoss, he's gone Terran. Neeb was, of course, Terran, he's gone Protoss. So you've got this kind of clash there and no one's going to be complaining about balance, whoever loses, if, if, one of, if they do go head to head. What are your thoughts on Group E? I'm going to go the other way. I think Gung Fu's the favourite. I've played against him a lot on ladder, and I know a few other Protosses or European Protosses can kind of have the same opinion as I do. He's a very strong Protoss player, and like you said, Pig, he is a PvP specialist. And I feel like their two styles up against each other is, is going to favour Gung Fu. All right, well, the first match of the evening is going to be Neeb versus Lilbo. We'll talk about that in a second. The second match, Shanna versus Kung Fu Banda. So an interesting map, three, or interesting set of players, sorry, three Protoss players uh, and a Terran. There, of course, uh, multiple races, which is, that is a, a funny part of this group. Well, let's, let's focus now on match number one, Neeb versus Lilbo. Uh, an interesting first match here, as Neeb has played in a lot of World Championship Series before, and we'll talk more about him in a second, but let's focus on Lilbo, first of all. Lilbo, Season 2 finalist for a long time in the European scene. I know that you've been well in the last couple of years, Sam. has been a player that's very close to breaking out, but not quite there. Was dominating the French team, but not quite there. But then all of a sudden, Season 2, he just hit it out of the park. He did, and I, I wouldn't say it was a surprise. He was performing consistently well online, and pretty much every pro in Europe was saying how good of a player he was. Unfortunately, his first kind of showing in WCS, he didn't actually make it too far, but like we saw in the previous season, he went all the way. He went all the way, and he's a, you know, a player who comes in as rank 23, Jared, is a player who everyone out there is like, oh, come on, he can go to BlizzCon, he can do it, he can do it, he can do it. He can play at the Global Finals. He believes it and he actually wants to go, and we haven't seen that type of confidence mm. from a player in a long time. Yeah, he's really got that, and I think he is a player who's a bit uh, momentum-focused. If you think about his past performances, you often see him on camera after a win looking very confident, and he's got this kind of commanding expression on his face, and you can see him kind of building up that confidence in himself. But uh, on the other hand, there have been a couple of times where sometimes if things aren't going his way, he can get a little bit over-eager and uh, maybe all in a little bit too hard or, mm. or kind of throw all of his dice in one cup. But uh, generally, like, in this group, his experience is, is starting to show. He's starting to turn into a real monster. I mean, he had such a good season too, but there has been tournaments, and we can't skip over it here, where he has been eliminated early. His style has been picked upon, and he has lost in the round of 32, in the round of 16, not quite hitting the same form heights in season two. Is that a problem he'll face this season as well? Is that kind of a struggle of his? Uh, that's the thing as well, and I mean you can pick apart his style. And Neeb, we don't know much a lot about him. So the fact that he gets to watch so much of Lilbo as a player, 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he, Lilbo doesn't know anything about Neeb, really. He saw the series probably against Stardust, but he's, yeah, I'd be, I'd be a bit scared if I was Lilbo, to be honest. All right, let's talk a little bit about Neeb then. So the 17-year-old travels over from the United States here to Cologne, Germany to compete in the World Championship Series. Here he is on that stage. Got a definitely tall task ahead of him, but when we look at his result that he played in Challenger, and that is just the one thing that stands out in recent times, this guy, because as you said, there isn't that much info about him. He took down Stardust, and in a way, you could say put him to retirement. Jared. Yeah, it was a really surprising win. I think the, a lot of people in the scene were very shocked at that. They kind of went, wow. And uh, you got to remember, he's only been playing Protoss <laughs> for a year. And before that, he was one of the most consistent American Terran players. He was in Premier League many, many times. And he's uh, actually, I think, made the successful swap quite quickly. The question here is how solid overall? That was one series. It's a best of five against a great player. But is he going to have the depth to kind of go through yeah. multiple opponents here today. And I, I think that's going to be the real test for him. Is he dealt with the travel well? Is he dealing with the stage well? And is he going to have enough, enough depth of play? I mean, for a lot of European players and uh, European viewers, you may not know Neeb that well, but he's played six Premier Leagues. That's really, really impressive for a 17-year-old, Jet Sam. It's incredible. That's a lot more than I have, and I know how hard it is. So the fact that he's done that, he's confidently switched to Protoss and is able to still enter the Premier League, it's impressive. Like, there's nothing else to say. Okay, let's uh, talk about, about these matching up then before we get to the map vetoes. Lilbo versus Neeb. What are we thinking when we look at these two head-to-head? -head? Uh, you know, I think Lilbo is going to be going into it playing his style, playing exactly what he wants to do. And he's usually a player who's uh, very commanding, a bit more aggressive in his play. And I think what I feel like he's got a clear edge in this matchup, and it's because when I look at the way they play, I feel like Lilbo's this player who's very confident from very early on in the game, and he's looking to grab edges at every single corner. At every moment, he's kind of looking to press his advantages, and I feel like his, his killer instinct is right up there. Whereas I feel maybe Neeb's on the opposite side of the spectrum where he's a bit more careful with planning out his play. You'd agree? I definitely agree with that. I watched the series against Stardust and there's no denying that Neeb's macro play is well up there. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Stardust, actually taking games off him. But at the same time, coming to this stage, his first kind of offline uh, I guess, performance with Protoss, is it going to go the way he wants it to go? Are the nerves going to affect him? Is he going to be able to defend how he usually does to get to that later stage in the game? And as we know from Lilbo, uh, he's an aggressive player. He'll be throwing all sorts out there, so. All right, well, the map vetoes have been done backstage. We'll get to that in a couple of moments, and I'd love to hear your thoughts here. Sam is our resident Protoss expert. <laughs> uh, you were more recent to retire than Todd, so you can take that away from him. And we'll I get guess. to that very, very shortly. But <laughs> Protoss, <laughs> Protoss versus Protoss. In a best of three, we've talked about this many a time in many a WSS show, many a any show, DreamHack and Intellect Stream Masters. This can be a devil of a matchup to play up on stage in just a best of three compared to, you know, a longer, more drawn out series. It can be. I don't know any Protoss player that can legitimately say that they enjoy playing the matchup. I remember back in the day when Parting said that it's not, it's not a coin flip, it's all skill. The next thing that happened, he lost the te next 10 series on the trot. So it's definitely not a matchup that I think uh, Protoss players enjoy. But at the same time, there is a lot of mind games involved. There is a lot of skill involved. So I still feel like the better player should win. It just depends who's better today. OK, well, it seems like there is a couple of issues with the players. So we'll jump into the game very, very shortly here. Is this heavily favored towards Lilbo, as you mentioned? Is it that heavily favored? If you were to put a number to it, you know, 55, 45, 60, 40, where would it be? Uh, I would say somewhere about 75, 25, maybe 80, 20, but it's, it's something where I feel like if Lilbo is just a little bit off his game and maybe slows down the pace and gives Neeb a little bit of space, maybe get, lets him get in his comfort zone, I think that can start to, to suddenly shift, but I'm confident that Lilbo wants this. I think he's going to come out swinging and I think he's going to find openings to, to really put himself ahead and maybe put Neeb on tilt or just force his way into the winning position. Okay, this is going to be best of three as mentioned. Let's take a look at the maps here. Uh, they're going to pop up on the screen down there for you gentlemen. I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. So the first three maps, Cactus, Coda and Iron Fortress. Sam, what, what screams out when you see these three maps? Um, I'm going to have to go with Cactus actually because I feel like Four-player map, I mean, Iron Fortress is also a four-player map, but it's a little bit smaller than Cactus. So Cactus, being the starting map as well, I feel like there's a lot of random kind of possibilities that go into that. So that being the first map from Lilbo, like, I'd like to see Lilbo kind of go for a standard map and take that lead that he, 
I guess everyone thinks that he should get. So yeah. I'm a bit confused by that, but uh, I don't know. Maybe there's some secret strategies that he wants to show. Well, let's continue forward then. Let's, let's take a closer look at Cactus then. If this is such an important part for you, we can have a look at the map here and just talk to us why this is a, a difficult map to start on. Well, basically, like I said, there is four spawn, spawning positions, as you can see. Um, but at the same time, Proxy Stargates are very, very common, and so are uh, fast expansion builds. So if you're going up uh, those builds kind of head to head, you're going to be in a bit of a tricky situation as the fast expanding player. And as we can see, Terra, Terra Mirror matchups played on this map already. So it is a kind of common matchup uh, map to play as a PvP matchup, but. Personally, I don't like it. <laughs> well, would you say this is the, the I, I mean, you've pointed out this map as a, a, as a big standing point here. Is this the most important map between these two now? To, not just because it's a difficult map to play and can be very awkward to play against your opponent, but it's the first map of the entire week here. This is the first map for these players. You've played on stage, you've played on stage. How difficult is that first map? Is it, is it a breeze? Is, I don't know, I've never played up there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It is because all of those reasons, like you just mentioned, but for Neeb especially, when I studied his games, it looks like he thrives of that kind of uh, just being comfortable in the series. Yeah. So this being the first map, being kind of a random map, if Neeb gets this win, I feel like that's definitely going to be a very good thing for him. How would you get the win, though? Do you go down the proxy Stargate way? Well, Do you I'm, go for the fast uh, expand way? Are you trying to be like <laughs> reactionary and defending and find out what's going on? Well, I mean, we did see him play this map against Stardust, and he did go for that proxy Stargate. So whether he does that in the first map, I'm yeah. not too sure. He did throw out the cannon rush in the first uh, map uh, in the series against Stardust as well, so that's definitely in his kind of builds, and that's definitely what he's, he can be capable of. But it's, it's going to be a tough one because is he that comfortable playing the first map of the whole round of 32 in Europe, yeah, playing yeah. against Lil Bo the first map of the day? There's a lot of questions that are kind of unanswered. Jared, I mean, if I was Lil Bo, if you were Lil Bo, you've got to be putting the pressure on that kid, right? I mean, he's oh, yeah. young, he's over here, this is in your territory. Yeah. You were the one that dominated in this, this part last season. Yeah, and I think Lilbo is not a player who's afraid to, you know, take some chances with this. He's like, well, I'm confident I should be there, but it doesn't mean I'm going to lock up and I'm just going to defend all game. I'm okay with the slightly more random four-player maps, the ones where it's a bit harder to scout out. He's like, because I'm going to go in there with some decisive play, and, and I plan to steal it away. And you can see that mindset difference to some extent in the map vetoes. I mean, with Coda being picked as the second map for Neeb, I think he wants to get into that stable yeah, position. Yeah. I think Lilbo is trying to say, no, nah, we're just going to take it through. I'm going to press my advantage, because Lilbo is a mechanical beast. He is far. He is so good at multitasking and control. If he can force it into those situations a lot, he can keep on getting advantages. I think he wants to bring the fight early and just clean it up. All right, we're going to go to the commentary team in a quick second here. Before we do that, I need your predictions. I have to get it down on paper, kind of verbally, I suppose. Who's winning this one and why? I'm going to say 2-0 Lilbo, just for all the reasons I've said. I think he's really confident here. Okay, and very briefly here, Sam, who's winning? 2-1 uh, to Lilbo, but I definitely think Neeb's going to take a game. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. We'll be having a lot more of you over today and, of course, the last couple of days as we continue with the round of 32. Now time to head to the commentary team. It's the classic combo of Todd and Kalari. It's time to see if second place finisher from season two can topple a gentleman who we haven't really seen in 2015 that much. He's uh, This is his first premiere appearance here in 2015 for Neeb. Yeah, not his first time to Germany, though. He no. was there before uh, for a tournament in the past. WCS back then he was as well and ended up playing pretty well in it, but didn't go quite as far as, as he would have liked, I think. Nib for me is a player who's always had potential to be great, yep. but never quite, you know, had that spark to actually be able to exploit that potential and went very, very far in a tournament, say something like a top four or a finals. So this definitely could be the time because he's playing pretty good these days. His challenger match against Stardust was nothing short of impressive. And we'll see how Little Bo's going to go up against him, who we know hasn't exactly had the most confidence in his Protoss versus Profoss compared to his other matchups. But he is looking for glory. He is looking to move on and try and find himself that BlizzCon spot. He has to start now here in Season 3. As we get to the bottom right-hand corner, it is our blue Protoss representing Team Millennium. It is Little Bo. Warming up his hands. He faces off against that man in the distance. And for a moment here, we'll figure this out. As Neeb 
hasn't been on the stage for a little while, as you said. Seems a little bit amused by it. <laughs> yeah, it seems so. Oh, well, Todd. I mean, how these ma guys match up? How do these guys really stack up against one another? Because Little Bo, obviously, you know, we I mentioned before, you know, not as impressive in PvP compared to his other matchups, but still, Little Bo here, got to be going in the big favorite, right? I think so, but at the same time, Nib is definitely a little bit more a wild card in regards of not having too much content out there that you can study from other than uh, his matchup against the Stardust. And uh, we're going to be remaking the game here in a moment. Yeah. So I'm going to be starting that over. Yeah, Lilbo, like, there is quite a few games out there that you can watch, quite a few VODs that you can study of him where you can definitely pick up on things he likes to do, uh, trends and all that, which always helps going to a league match like this, so to speak, as in you basically get time to prepare. That's that's the big difference between a weekend long tournament and WCS. When you go into a group like, like, like this, you got three opponents that you got to study, and uh, Nib has definitely got an opportunity before here, before this group took place, mm. to, uh, to study a lot of games, I think, from Lilbo. Yeah, interesting thing of Nib coming into this group, uh, especially going down the line a little bit further, is that he used to be Terran, and one would consider him to be the most, one of the most impressive Terrans in the American Hemisphere for a little while there. Um, so, do you see Nib being able to do something here against the likes of Shani, for example, because he will know uh, both ma the, the matchup from both sides of things? Yeah, but the same thing can be said about Shana, actually. It's true. Also, uh, switch race. I was joking actually uh, backstage earlier that uh, if that matchup happens, Nib against Shana, whoever loses has no right to complain about balance because, well, mm. they're both race switchers and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you know the, sp uh, the matchup from both sides, yeah. one would uh, completely understand that. I mean, I think it helps a lot, and it's yeah. actually a very undervalued thing in the pro gaming scene to properly study other races. Most players, uh, most pro gamers, they really study their own race and its strengths. Yeah. And I feel not enough the opposite race that they're going to have to face eventually. All right, well, we're loading back up onto Cactus Valley here for game at number one. Little Bo uh, just kind of going with the blows here and is happy to remake and keep on going here for now. And a lot of weight is on his shoulders, really, not only for the international scene here to have someone make to the top 16 at BlizzCon, but also, especially the French scene, look to Little Bo as a sign of hope. They've got a lot of good players at the moment. But Little Bo certainly leads the charge. Let's get into things once again for game number one here between these two Protoss players. As Little Bo can, looks to continue on. We do have here, representing Millennium in the blue, it will be Little Bo. And then up to the top left-hand corner, we have in the red, it is Neeb. Neeb had a very interesting game on this map uh, against Stardust back in his challenger match where he proxied the Stargate down on the map. And uh, behind this, went into three gateways, blink, but then when he realized that he could, he just went for a Nexus instead. And it seems like, generally speaking, he's always very happy to do so. Yeah. Uh, as soon as he sees basically that he's safe and that being Overly aggressive won't necessarily be the best option. He, I think Nib's very happy to throw down the Nexus, go into a later stages of the game. Usually that's going to mean most of the time a third base as well. And then from there, he's pretty good at the late game, I think, to be honest. Especially for a guy who used to play Terran. Like, mm. You watch some of these games of Nib really going into the later stages of PvP and you're like, I can't believe that this guy has been playing Protoss for this short amount of time. Yeah, it's so impressive that he got here, as you say. I mean, uh, with him having, in 2014, results behind him or as a Terran player and being able to get some of the higher positions in WCS America back when it was in that kind of uh, form. Now, being able to make the top 32 here as Protoss, uh, and once again, under a second race, really cool stuff to see Neeb being able to thrive. Yeah. Sadly for him, though, uh, he's going to be scouting the wrong way, whereas Lilbo was scouting in the proper one. Nib surely though is going to be realizing, oh, he should be realizing that it's close position with the timing that Lilbo scouted him at. And I think he will correct, yeah, he corrected his pathway, so he's going to be checking the bottom left hand side. Lilbo took a second gas later, 
then Nibe also started core later, so it's a little bit weird in regards of like he's gonna have more minerals and a little bit less gas than usual, supposedly with this. But somehow he's not doing too bad, I guess, gas wise. Yes, just banking on up. Neeb's getting himself his Mothership Core on Stalker nice and quick. Likewise, Mr. Lilbo has already got his Mothership Core on the way. Yeah. Lilbo played uh, in a French tournament yesterday, the equivalent of the French Championship yep. called uh, Underdogs. And he had to face T Drogo in the finals and he lost 1 3. But from those games, I, I talked a little bit about them with T Drogo and he told me that he thought that Lilbo was probably hiding strats and, you know, kind of playing a little bit random. He was also playing from his hotel room, which yeah. I don't think helped too much on the laptop. So. Not the games that we need to take the most or look the most seriously into, but at the same time, he definitely uh, showed that maybe in PvP right now he's not in the best shape of his life. At the same time, though, this is WCS. This is where it matters the most, and mm. surely he's going to have prepared a lot uh -oh. for this Dark Shrine. He's going to be thrown down in a second here, actually, by Lilbo, who's got the, the crouching probe hidden pylon. <laughs> going on, on on the map right yeah, now. Yeah, up towards the top right-hand corner, so maybe looking to sneak in a little bit further. Might even just throw the pylon up there, but regardless of what he wants to do, it's much harder for Neeb to spot that with his current unit based on the trajectory it's going to be taking up towards top. There's a very good chance he might see it, because one stalker Ooh. is not going to do that much here against the Mothership Core, so I think Neeb's going to be able to fly to the back of the mineral line here and most likely spot that Dark Shrine. Is it going to get cancelled, though? Oh, he's going further down, and he will be able to spot it. Good spot there by Neeb. I think no cancel. This. Probably, from uh, if I had to guess from Lilbo, he shouldn't cancel it, but he shouldn't use it as well for a very long time. And he cancels. Wow. Wow. Even though he was halfway through down. So I guess he's going to start a Nexus here instead, most likely. The funny thing is with the Robo going down here for Little Bow as well is that a lot is actually very uh, evenly timed down uh, between one another, of course. But losing a little bit of those extra minerals and extra gas does sting Little Bow a bit. He's going for a blink anyway. Interesting. I think Lilbo probably thought that his robo was going to be so late that if he had to face blink, he was going to be in trouble. So he's like, I need to have blink myself, even though I'm on a, only on two gateways. And I wouldn't be surprised if both players from there just expanded, started building up a little bit their sentry count. We see actually Nib already just swapped in the first one and dropped down a forge and went into a two-base yep. play with Colossus. Natural advantage slightly here then for Nib, as it's, yes, 26 workers, 26, but Blink being a little bit further ahead is okay. Um, no, Lilbo, he's not going to use that though, I think. Yeah, I mean, he's, it's oh, just the defensive posture. The two passing ships in the night. Yep, the bump, and then uh, this one will head on up towards the top. So at least he knows that he can try and deny this with the Stalker. Keep him in the dark a little bit about this Nexus, uh, which does help out a little. It's funny actually how they got exactly the same thing. Like, if you press the, the building tab, the structures tab, they've got exactly the same buildings right now, apart from one pylon. <laughs> so it's like completely mirror build here. And we'll have those Immortals cranking out soon here for Little Bow. He doesn't quite know about his opponent's Nexus, I don't think, either. So he wants to get in there and confirm that with this probe. And then once he does, he will feel a lot more safe, for sure. Yeah, both players, they want to know what's going on here. I'm pretty sure that Nib already anticipates an expansion. He's actually going to send in an Oracle, which is pretty cool to see. I don't think Lil Bo should overreact, though. He might be able to realize that he's just a sentry. Yeah. Not yeah. having seen, like, you know, the eight minutes Oracle usually is not a real thing. You're totally right, though, about Neeb's playstyle. Right now, he's really kind of playing to the book. Forge going down really fast so he can get those upgrades cranking out very soon. Uh, and the Oracle, having only just seen that one Immortal, it's not, it's not too much to read into yeah. here for uh, Neeb. I think Neeb's probably going to be happy to go up to two base and even later on to three bases, you know, take to Colossus, get his upgrades going. Whereas yeah. Lilbo, Lilbo is a lot more of a wild card. Lilbo sometimes will just be like, well, we went up to two bases. I'm going to hope you can attack a little bit too fast and attack you and try and kill you with a lot of Blink Stalkers, sometimes some Colossus as well. So we'll see. Mm. I really feel like Neeb, there is almost no chance he's going to be doing something like a two base, maybe a three base timing if he thinks that he has more Colossus, because it's happened before in his series against Stardust. Yeah. Little Bo prioritizing his Robo Bay uh, to get things going really quick in the Colossus department, though, and he knows that he will be behind in the upgrades for a moment since he did scout out the Forge up towards the very top, so that will leave Little Bo in a, in a small deficit when it comes to weapons upgrades, but maybe if he can eke out a Colossus more or so, maybe that can help. Yeah, usually it's very hard, actually, to read into uh, this kind of advantage just properly. Nib is actually doing a little bit better uh, in terms of probes here. He's just a few ahead. He's actually already going for uh, 
a cannon in his middle line in his main. That's definitely a bit on the early side of things. But I guess yeah, he, he saw that the Dark Shrine was cancelled. But I guess he just wants to play it safe here to make sure he doesn't take any damage. And it, Nib is going to start a third base as I had anticipated there. And actually he does that without even starting additional gateways before, which is a, can be a little bit risky, but I fully expect... Uh, the gateway explosion to happen here in a second. Thermal Lance already on the way here for Little Bow, uh, as he does have all that gas th truly acquired to be able to get that going very nicely, very quickly here. And from that point on, that part probe over to the right-hand side, I believe, might end up spotting this pylon if he goes a little bit further, but doesn't manage to go up to the high ground. So that's a good little position for it right now. And also that probe could potentially sneak around and throw down a pylon itself for some assaults later. Yeah, Lilbo delayed his own third base by a lot here. And now he's, he scouts a Nexus that's pretty close to finishing. So Lilbo's going to be faced with a choice here. Does he go for an attack himself or does he go for a Nexus? And I think he might have to go for a Nexus here, no matter what mode. Might try to apply some pressure regardless with this. Mm. That probe towards the third base is already spotted as well. So I, I think Nii believes that the little bit right now is not on a third base either or even uh, going towards the third base just yet. That probe is going to get confirmation down towards the bottom. And he did sm spot all of that moving across with the watchtower vision that he has. So he yeah. can position himself well for this. I think Lilbo's thermal lens, by the way, is about 50 seconds earlier than yeah. uh, Nib. So I think he might try to use that here to maybe basically force a bad fight out of Nib if he can. But he's going straight for the Nexus, even though Nib's army is there. Whoa. The Mothership Core for Lilbo is taking so much damage and he's just taking the fight, looks like. This is quite ambitious. He has quite a few Zealots at the front, though. They already worked with one of the Immortals. Photon Overcharge has done wonders here, and it's already brought down the Mothership Core, so there's not really much good room to retreat out here for Lilbo. He actually did a lot of damage to one of those Colossi at the front. Oh, the Immortal Michael? is trying to move forward, so doesn't quite get it. Second Colossus comes in here for Lilbo to try and help on out. The Micro was by Nib was really good, but Lilbo brought the Immortals forward and he sniped both of the Colossi here of Nib. Yeah, that's a great little move from him to be able to do that. I mean, he actually focused with them before. He had the higher Zella count. He's going to get this Nexus. And that's a lot of damage Lilbo yeah. did there in a very tight window. And behind this, he's uh, got his own third base on the way. He's warping in Zealots right into the fight there. And why still having two Colossi alive? A third one's about Ow. to rejoin them. Whereas Nib, he's got zero Colossus out. He's trying to get one. But expanding this early is going to backfire, I think, big time. And he's in so much trouble, Kailaris. Yeah, Little Bo has really read this situation very well at the moment. He's just going to back he's off. He's going to these gates from That's, down there. Yeah, that would be really nice. Even if he kills Artos some gates. Oh, poor guy. This is uh, going to be a little bit brutal. He needs all the reinforcements that he can get here against this army. That, again, there's three Colossi. That's a lot of firepower. But Little Bo looks to be backing off on the advantage that he has in his third base. Yeah, I think he got afraid that he, he might get sandwiched there or something, uh, not being able to see the entire army of Nib. But at the same time, he knows that he has a third base. Mm. So there is really no need for Lilbo to attack here. He can just come back. And as the third base of Nib is finishing up a little bit later on, then he can re-attack later on and finish it. What a strong advantage has just seized himself with yeah. the very, very well played out fight. As you said, you know, uh, those immortals actually being able to focus down on the Colossi because I don't believe they had Thermal Lance, right? So exactly the same range in those kinds of fights is going to leave you uh, pretty much um, in a this very is, bad spot. This is really the kind of lead that you can't really even read into that much. Like, it's very hard, very hard to actually like properly realize that you have Thermal Lens much earlier. But in this case, Lilbo might have. And the fact that he scouted an expansion about to finish already meant that he was going to be in trouble. So he had to make a drastic choice. Some of the time, it's going to mean you go into a second Robo and you try to kind of turtle yeah. and get ahead on the Colossus count. And sometimes it means attacking. And with Lilbo, a lot of the time, it means attacking. And here, that's what he went for. And he did really well with it. Yeah, he has it. He's just looking to finish it here. This is what I was talking about. Zealot advantage, Colossus advantage. He's going to have six out with this 6 1 rallying across the map here. Pro got sent into the main natural, I believe, there. Or it might have been a Zealot, actually. Uh, but it will get cleaned up. But the thing is, is that even bringing the Warp Prism along with this, Little Bo's army is going to be so ridiculous compared to Neeb's. Yeah, Neeb's going to be supply blocked here as well. He's got plus three on the way. I don't think he realized ah. that he's about to die. He no had to Nexus. Cancel. Yeah, I mean, it's the right choice, but can he get enough? Yeah. Actually, if Lilbo attacks into that area here, it's going to be harder for him to take a proper fight. But I don't think he is going to. He can just wait. Yeah, doesn't even need to. He can just lay claim to this position. On Cactus Valley, this choke point in front of the natural can be as equally hard to break out of as it can be to actually, you know, 
uh, break in through because there is such a narrow choke point in between those two. It's like an hourglass shape almost. Uh, so you've got to be diff uh, very, very careful about engaging through this location. Yeah. Nibs drops down two additional gateways here, uh, realizing he's got quite a few minerals to work with, and he's actually way overly saturated on the natural there. He starts that Nexus again. There is always a chance in PvP if you turtle, like, I mean, we, we've seen crazy games before. I think it was Showtime against Naniwa, where, like, that last game, Oh yeah. even though Showtime seemed to be behind the whole time in terms of army, he eventually built up an insane Colossi and Immortal Count. And actually, Nib at those late game fights, He's really good. One of the things that he does best is always having a, a warp prism with his army so that he can warp in inside of his opponent's Colossus ranks so that they kind of shoot at the Zealots that are warping in instead of, uh, I guess, at the rest of the army of Nib. So that's going to be one thing that can come into play if he, if he can buy a little bit more time. But if Lil Bo attacks soon here, he definitely should be able to overwhelm mm. the army of Nib because it's 126 army supply to 107. He knew there were Zealots to this right-hand side, though, thanks to the Warp Prism that was spotting. So he's going to just try and push in towards this third base from this angle. Uh, and then the Warp Prism is actually loaded up right now. With the Zealots oh, yeah. for Neeb? Four. Yeah. Just to be able to mess around with them. I think Neeb ideally wants to photon over charge and then go into the fight, but might be forced to go into it before. He's chasing Lilbo. Colossi are already getting quite a lot of shots off here, and oh, the Warp Prism is going through. Warp Prism, is it going to be able to do a lot at all? I mean, it's already on some of those Zealots, so it is causing some extra damage uh, from being denied at the front, but there's so much overwhelming this army. There you go, GG. Game number one will go to Lilbo. The move over towards the third play base, just really, really strong stuff there, stopping to Lilbo. Yeah, Lilbo's army in that attack didn't even look that overwhelming. He just had a few more units, but Nib got caught completely off guard. And at first it was really weird too, because Lilbo, it looked like he was attacking the Nexus for a moment, and he, was in, he yeah. wasn't even looking at his army, but he was. Like, he spread out properly, and then he sent the Immortals on this Colossi of Nib. Because I think he... Very, I mean, as soon as this, this Colossi from Nib started shooting at, the, at his units, Lilbo realized there was no thermal land, so he was like, well, I'm just going to take you down with the Immortals. And that was the winning move. Simple as that. Yeah, very, very well done. Now Neeb obviously going to have to collect himself a little bit against that. He was in a good position to start things off. You know, he was doing a lot of things right. He was able yeah. to spot the Dark Shrine. Uh, he was able to try and transition onto his natural at a good time. He there was ahead something. economically, which means that you're behind yeah. in army usually. So mm. you need to be careful for a move out. And I think it just came down to he wasn't anticipating this attack at all. Yeah. So are there any things there that you think that Neeb can iron out just not taking a third base as quickly as that? What, what? Scout better. If he had seen it coming before, I think he would have been able to chrono boost out more units, maybe even get like some extra static defense, like like one or two cannon can make a difference. Or even just chrono boost uh, his, his thermal lens a little bit better, I think would have helped a lot, okay. clearly. Well, we're going to go to a short break, guys. And when we are back, it is going to be game number two between Little Bo and Neeb. in now for game number two here between Little Bo and Neeb, as Little Bo really showed strong mastery and decision making and understanding the race more so than anything, realizing where those windows were and where they aren't. Yeah, it kind of seemed like Neeb really got caught off guard here though from this and now he's definitely 
gonna try to look out a lot more for this kind of timing here from Nilbo, I think. Mm. Yeah, he'll uh, certainly be on lockdown for this. Our next map is gonna be Coda here between these two players as Neeb looks to get himself back into the driving seat and try and keep himself alive. He ends up in a pretty tough group, I would say. Uh, but going into Coda in PvP, what do you make of this map, Todd? How, how are you feeling about this? Well, I think it's like one of the more standard maps where like it's going to be easier to scout for stuff like proxies and all that, which is actually very interesting because on this map, during his challenger match, Neeb went for a cannon rush. That started around wow. the natural uh, and, you know, towards that ramp of uh, Stardust and went forward. He, he walled off one cannon with like one pylon and one gateway around it, which was brilliant. And then from there, made more cannons and took down the Nexus of Stardust, who just ended up losing pretty early. So Lilbo is kind of known for scouting, I think, the indoors of his main base, but not necessarily always all, uh, outside of that. So surely, though, Lilbo, he's seen that game and he's going to be on the lookout for that. And at the same time, Lilbo, in the series that he played yesterday uh, against T Drogo, he went for Stargates, and then he added two more gateways, and he made a bunch of Phoenixes, but what's very special about the build that he did is that he waited on, until he had three Phoenixes. He didn't scout anything, and he waited until he had three Phoenixes to start exploring the map and flying across the map. So he was clearly trying to trap some kind of Stargate play or any kind of aggression. And the only build he would have been in trouble against is Dark Templars, which I'm guessing he really didn't expect. Like, he's, it's like, you're doing well against most builds except one. It's an okay risk to take sometimes. All right, well, we're getting into it. Game number two here between Neeb and Lilbo to figure out who is going to be moving on to the winner's match here in the World Championship Series. Round of 32, Group E. And at the moment, Lilbo is on the warpath. He needs to look at this as almost a stepping stone to try and get himself to greater heights. As we have spawning up to the top left, it is our blue Protoss. It is Lilbo. And to the bottom right-hand corner, we have our red Protoss. Here we go. Coming from America, it is Neeb. By the look of things, might not be cannoning, because last time I'm pretty sure his forge was uh, towards his ramp. Mm. This time his pylon is in the back of his mirror line, so it looks just to be a standard gateway here, most likely by him. Which I guess makes us all happy, even though cannon rushes are fun. <laughs> They're not quite the, the realest games out there that you can see at times. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of um, talk about how Neve does have some confidence in his macro play. And I yeah. think if he'd have gone into the later fights with a, a kind of level pegging there, that warp prism play he uses with the Zealots dropping across it, yeah. it did negate a lot of damage, but he was extremely far behind by that point. Yeah, it can be... It can change a lot, but in that game, it was always going to be kind of irrelevant. Yeah. So, yeah, I kind of want to see, like, a, a closer game in, in regards of that, where, like, both players potentially could be maxed out and then using that warp prism, because I feel like he's one of the guys that does this the best, and uh, he does very well from games that uh, go into a three base, like a proper three base against three base situation where yeah. both players are like decently passive to some extent. A true Terran in the end, trying to find some way to drop in your opponent, even in PvP, he finds it. And uh, yeah, it's it's quite devastating if it works out on a, on a level field. But for now, we will have little Bo here cruising forward pretty fast with his cr um, cybernetic score actually quite... Uh, a little bit further forward, about yeah. 20 seconds or so. Lilbo was looking out for that cannon rush, by the way. Came down the ramp, seconds. check around his natural, the uh, whole yeah. way there. Three plus three seem to have been done here. Uh, at about the same time from both players, you can see their gas is like pretty much equal. Mm -hmm. Just a few minerals apart, I think it's like eight. So, could be anything. I think that um, both players, though, they really like to play Twilights. With Lilbo probably sometimes uh, liking to add the Stargate beforehand a little bit more than Neeb. Neeb really strikes me as like, in a lot of the games that he had success with, he opened Twilight, added on two gateways, then made a Robo. So he opened Blink one base, and then as soon as he knew he was safe, he made the Nexus. Yeah. And he was happy to play a longer game. Whereas Lilbo, quite a few times we've seen him go for a Stargate, and then behind is just adjust, you know, add his own Blink. Mm. I have to ask something about uh, Neeb's building placement uh, also than anything else. Oh, there we have the Stargate on the way for you. 
And Twilight Council are going to be going against that. But Neeb's initial building placement in the back of his mineral line, he may not have been anticipating a, the, a true hardcore like proxy or something like that. But is this kind of building placement something that is very good against that kind of play in PvP? Uh, it, it can come into play a little bit. I guess like if, if you get cannon in this position, then your gateway is not going to be in range of okay. the cannons where like it's falling down anyway. But like you don't, you want to be able to see a, a cannon rush anyway. And Neeb is doing the build I was talking about. This is a build with which is I think really really good and doesn't usually want to be aggressive, even though there is the possibility that you want to be aggressive. So you open three gateways like this, blink, and then you add a robo a little bit later to make sure you have detection on time against Dark Templars. Yeah. You scout a lot for to see if your opponent's going for some kind of expansion, because that's the only really thing that you should be very scared about. Because if your opponent expands quickly, then you're going on blink like this on one base, you kind of need to commit to aggression and do damage, because if you don't, then you're going to fall very far behind and die. And in this case, I'm pretty sure that Nib's going to be very happy to see that he's his target. Oh! oh but that means that the Photon of a Charge was already forced by Lilbo. Yeah, that was uh, quite this unexpected, might, actually. This might encourage some kind of counter blink play later on down the line, especially since Nib already has a pro battle on the map, across the map. I was a little bit worried for the Mothership call when there was two Stalkers in there and the angle it was coming in to try and spot the Stargate, yeah. but then Lilbo really committed to killing that off. Absolutely, yeah. He wanted to get it, and uh, it's, I don't think it's a bad move, to be honest. Nib, though, he already has three stalkers. He's gonna warp in two more. He's gonna start warping in, warping them in three by three, and he's kept on the robo, fully realizing that Lilbo had gone for a stargate into his own robo. There is no need here for Nib to add yeah. on his own robo. So Nib is gonna keep three stalkers at home up until he has 100 energy on that mothership core for the overcharge, and he's gonna go across the map and make sure that Lilbo is not allowed to take, basically, a nexus. Sneaky probe down to the bottom has somehow managed to sneak all the way into the natural and even the stalk is now going to warp in aggressively so little boy has to be careful about this he's getting himself immortals he knows that there's potential of a threat here and he's trying to sneak in with the oracle as well yeah, he's trying not to lose too many hit points here just the shields to mm. try and kill two probes at a time against three stalkers cool. Force field could be important on that ramp here for a moment, just to buy him time uh, against these stalkers. But if one stalker did blink forwards, then he could try and do something. But he's going to use it in more defensive posture. Yeah. Uh, there is a chance Nib. I think Nib just wants to go for an Exus, by the way. He's about to throw it down, but there is a chance he does a lockdown here. But I don't think he necessarily will risk it or has to. We'll see. And he does oh, he's swapping a sentry out. somewhere? No, it's at home. Yeah, and the Nexus has already been spotted here as well by Lilbo. So. I think Neem knows that he made Lilbo scared, so he's happy to start the Nexus earlier. And he's to make sure not to lose any of these uh, probes there. He needs to start his own Robo, by yeah. the way, he will just now, because you need to start building up your Immortal Count not too late. Yeah. And uh, even Observer to be able to make sure your opponent doesn't see everything that you have. And make sure you can transition at a good time against Lilbo here, who technically already has his Robo down. You don't want like a really early Robo Bay, I guess, kind yeah. of dealing, having to deal with that against your lack of Robo Bay, potentially. So both players, uh, from this point onwards, you know, they are going into the expansion against expansion scenario. We should be seeing Forges starting momentarily, and then they're going to upgrades, Colossus. Oh, lost the Stalker. Nice little move out by a little bow, just to be able to catch that. He keeps good eyes on it with the Observer. And this Oracle, oh, forces a four and overcharge. Oh, manages to get it with the last shot. Good cleanup by Neeb. That will alleviate some kind of pressure there up at the top. Yeah, nicely done. Bottom of the charge was forced though. I wonder if you'll if you'll real remake uh, an Oracle later on down the line, but usually you don't really in this situation here as Lilbo as you have to focus on other things where you're gonna spend your guys like Immortals or even Colossus Tech, which should come after his second Nexus is up because a fourth Immortal already here, that's mm, a pretty big number by Lilbo. Yeah. Wasn't expecting exactly that to go down because the more gas that you take away from the immortal production means that you are getting a later, later Robo Bay, right? Yeah. Exactly. Usually, like, you don't start the Robo Bay up until the point you have, like, the gases on the way on the natural or even already mm. saturated, because that's way too much gas. So but it's just... Need, uh, to go for Colossus. Just kind of a compensation move, considering his Nexus was a little bit later. Yeah, quite possibly. Okay. Definitely needs to start additional gases here, Lil Boys. Taking a little bit too long. Same thing goes for Nate. Both players here. They've got plus one on the way now. Robo Bay on the way, taking his gases be after this, so I just want to loan. Uh, but those Immortals at the front, really going to stand strong. Uh, likewise with the fact that he's going to have plus one weapons a little bit earlier than Neep here, does open up small little avenues, but these four-man Stalker squad that he has at the front for Neeb is the perfect number. If he had a Hallucinated Phoenix to jump up, that's the perfect number to be able to start one-shotting probes in the back. Yeah, but Lilbo knows that it's possible though, so he's... Yeah. 
is in position to prevent that from happening. Nib's going to do the double four stalker hit squad here to try and get some probes, but if he commits to it, he's going to lose a lot and I think not achieve enough for it to be worth it. And he might even open himself up to a counter attack because Lilbo right now, he fully knows that he's ahead on the Immortal count by far. He's got four against uh, one. And a second one about to come out here for Neve. And Blix is on cooldown here for three of these stalkers. It finally comes off now, and he will be able to get himself in a better spot to try and kill off as many probes as possible. But four for four uh, stalkers? Five? Yeah. Is that enough? I don't think he's very good at all. Oh. And actually, he lost stalkers on the other side as yeah. well. Look at this. That oh one's no. going to get chased on. Lil Boom had just start moving across the map here and applying even more pressure while taking his own third base. Look at this. Third Nexus is going to go down here in a second for he Lil lost, He lost nine stalkers in in total across that, where there's been very little army lost at all yeah. here for Lil Bo. That's, that's quite quite problematic here for Neeb. And Neeb this time around, he didn't play very greedy. He didn't start a third Nexus without adding on additional gateways beforehand. Whereas Lilbo is the one expanding earlier. So even though like Lilbo is ahead on everything, he's moving yeah. out with more army, he's gonna be able to apply pressure. I don't think he wants to quite come into a fight unless Neeb overextend and like moves out. Surely Neeb needs more army, right? I mean he's got cannons going down in his mineral line, but this army here encroaching on yeah, his territory is huge. He's gonna make sure that there's no third base starting anytime soon, I think. This is this is so difficult for Neeb to deal with at the moment. He's committing everywhere where it's not going to work out. This third base is going to get cancelled, guaranteed. And still, army supplies are 51 to 29. So, Little Bo has uh, so much strength because he has his first crosses there as yeah, well. He's completely outplaying, outplaying here Neeb so far. Plus two starts here for Neeb. I think he, Neeb always identifies that even though he's not doing so well, the upgrades might be one thing that can, can save him at times. And in the previous game, he did go for the plus three against no plus three that ever started from Lilbo, but in the end, didn't quite have enough army. I'm not sure about this move out, Neeb. No. It's, it's a weird situation here for Neeb because he knows that he needs to move out and make something happen, but at the same time, he can't because if he does, he's going to lose everything. Yeah. So you kind of feel pressure into moving out. Very, very difficult times here for Neeb, who has put himself in this spot. Those stalkers at the front trying to get some damage done completely backfired on him. And now yeah. he's having to deal with, he's already seen the third base up towards the top has Neeb. He has a pylon up towards the right. Maybe he can try and do some damage there, but Little Boat is not going to let go of this kind of lead. Yeah, so Neeb's going to come into an attack with the plus two that he's getting. He knows that he's probably going to be getting that much earlier. Mm -hmm. He's getting a warp prism charge and yeah. plus two at the same time. He starts a nexus, I really... I thought he was going to go for like a full-on attack here. It's full-on zealots. It's nothing else. I mean, he's got a lot of zealots in comparison to Lilbo, which against Immortals can actually work out pretty well. But uh, Lilbo is going to have probably a defender's advantage. Even Colossi reinforcing like three against two. That's probably going to help him out quite a bit as well. Yeah, Lilbo is he's ahead in everything except the upgrades, which I don't think matter when there's that, dif that much a difference. Or there is going to be that much a difference in terms of army supply because right now it's pretty equal. 75 to 75. Mm, he feels that he's way too far behind. Here we go, 81 army supply against 75. He's going to move into position with that plus two weapon. The war prism is there for Nib, so there is a chance somehow he makes this work. There is double photon of a charge available. Oh, Colossus on the left-hand side Whoa. here, way out of spot. And this is what fall. he was fishing for. That was a great little move there. The war prism the comes time, in. And there is no photon of a charge. With all of that time, what went down, charge was on cooldown because it was going over to that Immortal on the, uh, sorry, the uh, Colossus on the left-hand side. The Colossi are being micro back here for Little Bo to do as much damage as possible. And now Neeb's army is pretty naked there, but they've managed to chew through a lot of that. And Little Bo is struggling to hold on. Yeah, the War Prism almost died there, but uh, gets away barely in the end. And Neeb needs to make something happen right now, even though he's going to Nexus on the way. If he doesn't make this timing work, mm, this army's going to come in from both sides. The probes are going to come in for the surround as well, because Little Bo knows all he has to do really is shut this army down. And maybe he can be able to vic be victorious here in this game. There is no third uh, Nexus behind this. Oh, actually, I say that. He did add that on. Yeah. So He could pick up some units here to try and save them, but uh, Nib's still struggling here with this attack. He's lost a lot already. Oh, uh, he's not picking up anything. Oh. The War Prism, totally forgot about this. Could I save one Colossus and try and get out? <laughs> There's no anti-air. He can't kill off the Warp Prism. So crazy little engagement there. He killed off 17 workers. Well, actually two Stalkers. Uh. He needs to get out there. Oh. Lil Boss. Does he actually want to attack there? He doesn't have a reinforcing pylon across the map, but he's got quite a few less left over here. What a crazy engagement. Very hard to follow all the little nuances of that as they were yeah. going down. But Little Bo survives, but Neeb comes out with what looks like a real big advantage yeah. now. Lil Bo starts charge and plus two as Neeb is about to get plus Jeez. three finishing here in like one minute. So Neeb is definitely still in this somehow through this attack. 
Lilbo lost quite a few probes. Yeah, 17. It was um, a total of 25 have gone down. He's down to 53 probes to 60. So Lilbo, the more time he's giving Nib now, the more Nib is going to get, I guess, a lot of army out and he's going to be able to fight better later on. But at the same time, I guess Lilbo didn't want to commit to a single fight himself. So he's just going to be corner boosting out probes right now. That's what he's doing ac across his three nexuses to try and come back here in this game economically. The one advantage Lee Lilbo's going to have is the fact that his Colossus count is going to be a little bit higher here. If Neeb yeah. added on a second Robo, then I think he'd be in a great, great spot. Yeah, that'd be very risky though, because if there had been a counter attack, maybe that's what he was, uh, he was worried of. Mm. So. Both players here. Going to be amassing Colossi, Archons, and Charge Lots as well. And Nib definitely uh, salvaging the situation very yeah. nicely, considering how far behind he, uh, we thought he was. Get on that Colossus at the start of that fight on the left hand side, yeah. the left flank, with everything being bunched up as it was as well. And he just had a vastly superior Zealot count. Need to reiterate that. It was very. Lilbo needs to strong. be careful. He could get caught on the map here. Archon count is four here for Nib. So even though he's behind on Colossus, if his army gets flanked from multiple sides or attacked very quickly here, and he's not time warping it. Look at this, Nib. He wants to engage very quickly. Sees that he can, so he's just going to pull back. He's waiting for a good opportunity here to time warp if Lilbo were to move out or Vex. And Lilbo is yeah. adding on extra additional gateways there. But supply-wise, there is a big lead now for Nib. 107 army supply to 88. He was bouncing around on the outskirts of that fight just for a moment there as Little Bo. If Nib had engaged, actually, he had plus three against plus one here for a very long time. Plus two just finished here for Little Bo, so he's going to start plus three himself, and behind this we have a fourth base for Nib. He's doing himself a lot of justice after being able to hit that small window that he needed to. Remember, he did not have a Nexus. He added it on all the while that was going on, and Little Bo is trying to catch up with his fourth Nexus of his own. So much for PvP giving us fast games, yeah? <laughs> this one's this one's going the distance at the moment. Neeb has really shown a very, very strong level of understanding himself. Of course, Little Bo yeah. had that great read in the first game, but Neeb here in game two, he knew what he needed to do. Going for the shield upgrades as well here. It's funny, they said they take the same forward base as well, like no corner base out on the map for either player here. And with Nib having his uh, fourth base earlier, like he's definitely still in a pretty good position. He's gonna come down a lot to the ultimate army composition, though, which usually is greatly affected by the amount of Colossi, Immortals, and yeah. Archons that you have. The Zealots count is fairly irrelevant unless you get a big engagement on the map. Nib seems to really want to play aggressive. He's gonna move in for a big fight here. Uh, it's eight against five at the moment. All the Colossi there from Nib did start firing off, but again, it is eight against five. How much will that actually make the difference? Zealot warp in towards the back here against Colossi, and he's gonna have to move on away. He's doing it. Nib is playing a very, very strong game at the moment, and he's even finding his way onto the Colossus count. They're both gonna shred each other up. But in the end, Neeb is going to get onto this fourth base and probably deny it. With the crazy account count that he had and uh, the, wa the warp prism warping in Zealous behind, Neeb was able to do pretty well at first, but Lilbo's trying to micro his way out uh, of this one. Still more Colossi moving forwards here for Lilbo. He somehow was able to kill off the remainder of them. The Zealots at the back, they just go on to the top of these Colossi and try and shut them down as quickly as possible. It's going to retreat on out. As Mothership Core was doing a one-on-one -on -one with the Archon and it's not going to win no. it. Neeb still chasing on these Colossus. He's going to try to get one. This game, oh my god, great pickup <laughs> to be able to actually get himself that Colossus. But look at the supply counts now. <laughs> 87 against 93. The army's vanished. They have about the same oh. work account, Nibs actually got, only got one more probe, but he's already saturating on the fourth wow. base. He's taking the gases there now. What a great game. And what Colossus <laughs> count has been reset. It's 2-2-2 two to two, uh, once again. Unbelievable. <laughs> and they were just trying to retreat out there, that wounded Colossi uh, for Nib on the other side, whereas Little Bo is looking pretty healthy at the moment. Yeah. He needs to get himself the gas up and running at his fourth. This could be the winning move, by the way. Nib's adding on the second Robo there, which mm. is going to be very important over time, because if he starts getting this Colossi 2x2, two two, and he is, he's going to be in a fantastic position. Having these gases on the first base so much earlier as well means that his Archon count is going to be ahead once again over time, because he's going to be mining way more gas. Right now, it's Little Bo that's Really spent all of his minerals and gas and uh, is a little bit ahead on the Archon count, but I mean, as long as he doesn't attack, he's not going to come into play. So despite Neeb going kind of toe-to-toe -to -toe with the armies, he's still going to be able to create a better quality army yep. in, the, in the next coming stages. Absolutely, and he's getting shields, plasma shields level uh, 2 as well, which means that wow. Neeb... Oh, he's warping in DTs.
Is he going to use them or is he just going to turn them into Archons? <laughs> maybe yeah, he looks like maybe he wanted to save some gas yeah, and he yeah. thought he had enough minerals. So he's whopping in DTs instead of High Templars here to make some Archons out of. But yeah, if you pull two upgrades ahead, even if those upgrades are the shields, they can come in really handy here. Nib is now ahead once again mm. in supply. I mean, especially for Archons as well, they're almost exclusively shields. Oh, he's actually trying to get into Snipe out some of these units with the Dark Templars. This is a clever little move, because that's going to cost a lot, but one of the Colossus does end up falling. Neeb stretching himself quite far. Uh, he's going to recall. He's and he gets the Nexus Yeah, he the got map. himself the fourth base. This is massive here. This might force Lilbo into a fight that he does not want to take here. Lilbo is really thinking about it. For a moment, he was marching towards here that uh, th fourth base of Neeb. Not sure why he's sacrificing those units there, though. They're really not going to do too much. I think Lilbo might just restart that fourth base and go into full turtle mode here. A really good showing by Neeb here, as he will have that plus two shields armor finishing up very, very soon. Looks like Still two, out. two Colossi in the production type here for Neeb. So as, as soon as these two that we see in the production type come out, he's going to be on six against four. And from there, it's really, really hard to lose unless you take a very bad fight. Seven That's Archons. all he has to look out for. Yeah, seven Archons against three, but as you said, the shield upgrades here for Neeb Ooh, could definitely make a caught. difference. No time warp available here for Neeb, but shield he set up please. a good concave down that ramp. Right. Lobo's trying to poke. He's trying to bring Neeb into him, like whoever attacks here. Yeah. Into that ramp, he's going to be a, a bad odds. Ooh, these Took, lasers. That was a big volley. He cannot engage now. He would have to wait for his shields to re regenerate before he would actually engage. Yeah. You know what they say, you, you mess with the bull, you get the horns. Well, you mess with the Colossus, you get the lasers. <laughs> They're, they've done well for themselves. And, you know, him poking forwards like that, got to be very, very careful. Once your, once your thermal lances are on cooldown, as it were, for a moment there, those Colossi poke forwards and get some free damage off. Nine Archons against yeah. six, though. And Nib, oh, behind okay. this, I really, I really like the fact that he, he realized he was going to start building up a bank because he's maxed out, so he added on three more gateways, and he's even getting shields level three. That's so sick. No armor upgrades so here. It's all about the shields. He's going to be able to send his, his War Prism behind Lilbo's army if he gets attacked, or even if he attacks, and then start warping in Zealots right into the fight. Ah, uh, and uh, so Civil War goes down in Protoss ranks here as he kills off a few of his probes just to be able yeah. to warp in a few more units uh, to make his army even stronger. Yeah, and you know, there is always the argument of why didn't he send these probes to be sacrificed on Lilbo's army? Because he didn't want to reveal it to Lilbo. Because yeah. if Lilbo realizes, he might start doing the same thing to try and equalize those numbers in army. Yeah, it's a very good point. Very good point. Uh, and of course now, he just poor positioning himself. That's a lot of zealots he's going to have charging up against this. And he has Archons to back it up as well. Army supply here in favor of Neeb, as he will be able to try and push forwards. The War Prism got sniped in the back here, but I don't think Lilbo has enough anyway. No, it doesn't look like it at all. The Colossi are going to be on top of very, very soon. The Archons at the front have tanked up. Here come zealots from the left flank as well against these Colossi. And there you go, GG. Game number two goes to Neeb. Great showing by him to know exactly when to hit at that pivotal moment after the third base had gone down. Really well done. And he's happy with it. Look at him. Uh, he's very good in the later stages of the game. Like I said, if you go into a three-base scenario and like it's more on the passive side of things, and actually he was even the one to take the aggression to Lilbo this time around, I do think that Nib is, is very, very good in the late game. Uh, Lilbo is going to have to reevaluate his position there because Nib really brought him to him. It looked like Lilbo had a really great advantage, to be fair. Uh, after the third base had gone and you know him just trying to position himself as well as he could but the the unit composition there from Neeb in that first initial engagement having so many zealots and catching that Colossus it's difficult there for him. Yeah Lilbo wasn't ready for this. He seems like whoever takes a third base and makes a few too many probes if, <laughs> if you don't see the attack coming you're going to be in trouble here yeah. no matter what so even though Lilbo kind of got out of the situation in a nice way he took quite a bit of damage and in the end he was really far behind on upgrades. Neeb now, one game away from a big, big upset here in our first series of the day. First series of Premier here in Cologne. As obviously we have just been handed the baton from America and are running on with it. But Neeb comes all the way from America and looks to upset the Frenchman. The Frenchman who is looking for BlizzCon glory. Of course, he does have the potential to get there, does a little bow, but needs to be more solid. Needs to be more on lockdown. Can't let small defeats here and there get to him at yeah. this point. And we're going to be playing on Iron Fortress, eh, a map that can be ranked at tri as tricky at times because, you know, it's a four-player map. It's going to be a lot of the time pretty tough to kind of get lucky and get the proper scout yeah. early on. And, you know, Stargate's going to be pretty popular on a map like this. 
sometimes quicker expansions on some of the maps if you want to take a little bit of a risk here and there but one of the safer builds here that you can go for and that if i was need personally i definitely would do because he's done really good i feel like oh, actually like having studied his games i think he must he won almost every single time that he opened with blink with three gates and then added a robo mm -hmm. which in last game was necessary because he was facing a stock every time he opened safe like this it led to taking a second base. Every time he took a second base, it led to taking a third base, and every time he won. So, yeah, maybe it's time to <laughs> really start picking up on that fact and opening like this every game. All right, well, let's get into it. Game at number three now. Little Bo needs all the wins, needs to get on forwards here to make sure that he can keep his BlizzCon hope alive as we have. In the blue, representing Team Millennium, it is Little Bo. have in the red, able to tie up the series 1-1, representing America, it is Neeb. Is North America better than Europe, guys? <laughs> it's Everybody a... loves to argue about this. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it always comes down to when uh, a North American player plays against a European one. Yes, it does. It's an age-old question, uh, which has been answered many, many times on different fronts. And I'm not saying which way. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm messing with you, Todd. I know you like France and France only. Uh, so, for now, Little Bo here going into this. Is there anything wild he can throw out, or does he just kind of fall back on having a strong macro prowess? Uh, I think if I was Nib, like I said, like I'd definitely try and open with like something like a blink, one base, and then into a second base very yeah. safely. Little Bo sending out a probe this early, though. Definitely an indicator that he might want to do something a little bit more aggressive. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, Wait a minute. with the direction of that probe, is that a proxy stargate I'm thinking about? Yeah, that's in a very... Yeah, I <laughs> that is in one that of those... That is a very specific location, Kyle Harris. Yes, that is. This is what... But actually, sadly, for like, when you go for this kind of thing, you're saying, I hope he's in one of those two yeah, places of exactly. three, but in this case, it's going to be kind of far away. I remember back in a dream hack, Night End referred to it as a probability build. I think it was on some, a map like Taldry Malta way back when. Um, but we will now head into a per first person view here as we do have Little Bo here just kind of positioning himself with his Stargate and spamming on away. He already sees that Neeb has spotted him out though. Yeah. Uh, the first person is not for the faint of heart, but. <laughs> no. You, uh, you could get a little bit This uh, is actually a, a nightmare scenario right now for Lilbo. The yeah. last thing that you want when you go for this kind of build is to be scouted this early. I think Neeb is going to be able to identify pretty quickly what's going on. And that's what happens a lot of the time. And then start preparing for it. Yeah. Uh, only seeing this one pylon alone gives Neeb a good heads up as to what's going on at the moment. So Stargate is going down over at the other side. Neeb. Oh, Neeb might get his own Stargate. Oh. Look at this. He's not spending any gas. Oh my god, the read. Oh. He doesn't start warp gates or stalker. He just gets mothership core to make sure that any kind of probe of Lelbo is going to be able to be kept out of his base and then he starts his own stargate, fully knowing that this is probably going to be yeah. an oracle thing into his base and he wants to get a phoenix. If Lelbo, sadly for him, doesn't realize that very soon and flies an oracle into a phoenix, I mean, even if you're starting starcraft 2, you already know that it's like one of the worst things that can happen to you. Yeah. Unless Little Bo goes on the second read and just tries to go for something like Phoenix, but that would be ridiculous yeah. from here. It's going to be an oracle. an oracle. And he thinks it's up towards the top left uh, because of the timing of the probe scouting yeah. him. He's going to check with his probe though on the bottom right hand side and yeah. know that Neeb is there, but he, there's no way. I don't think that probe can get in though. If it does, it'd be crazy. Oh my god. Neeb that started an oracle though. Oh wow. Oh, and he went back with his mothership call. There is a chance that Little Bo might be able to see this. Uh. Gets out of there. Oof. Well. This is very interesting now. Both players going for the aggression. I was expecting a Phoenix out of yeah, me. Yeah. I think getting an Oracle though is okay because he's getting... He's going to have Photon of a Charge in a second. Mm -hmm. There is no way that Lilbo is going to be able to defend properly against an Oracle and behind this, Nib can make the Phoenix. And also like when there is a proxy like this on the map and you don't think you can scout it, it can also be DTs. Yeah, yeah, I get you. So getting the Oracle... Oh no, Nib's moving out of position. Oh, he's way out of spot. I mean, the Mothership Core... He completely come misread soon, the situation in the end. I thought he, I thought he had read it properly, but... Our Oracle is on in for the kills here. It's already got itself five. It's just going to stick around and get as much as possible. Seven go down. And that's a lot. That is a lot. Did he spot that? 
He may. Oh, no, okay, he needs to even the count here. Yeah. His Third stalker, stalker is, is out here for Lil Bo. Do, can he react on time? They're in defensive position. This is really good here for Lil Bo. I mean, two of them in the mineral line alone is not too bad. And also the third one is just... Uh, he's got four out at the moment. And I think Lil Bo behind this, he has every wow. point to stay on Blink Stalkers and try and finish the game. He's going to chase that Oracle away after just one single kill. He's already got a Python across the map here, does Lil Bo. And he's going to start Blink much earlier than, uh, than Nib here. I mean, forcing out the photon overcharge alone is great for his chances to actually go for a follow-up attack yeah. and then be able to exploit, right? Absolutely. Lilbo is just in a great position here from there. I can't believe Nib made an Oracle and then, like, it looked like he was calculated, but then he moved out and lost so yeah. many probes. Dark Shrine is going to be the choice here for Nib. Went behind, I guess. <laughs> in <laughs> this <try> case, <laughs> when you don't really have a choice anymore, you drop down the Dark Shrine, you kind of hope to get lucky. <laughs> But even getting a pylon up across the map here for Nib is going to be so hard. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. Uh, Stalker's already scouting out every little angle, every little location where something like that could be going down. But uh, the Oracle tried to swing him back again and will still be denied by any all these Stalkers in these positions. And you must now know that there are a lot of Stalkers racking up and still no natural. So. Yeah. There is a chance that Lilbo, though, doesn't get her... Uh... Oh, another Oracle, Todd. Oh, yeah, maybe as detection. Because he was not starting a robo yeah. I was really starting to wonder. Then I saw him spend all his gas. I was like, what? I guess he gets another Oracle here for detection because he doesn't want to start a robo now. And he's positioning Stalkers on the ramp, knowing that there is the potential yeah. for a Dark Templar. So he really has good reads here, does Little Bo. Yeah, he's very, very nicely played here. He's going to be able to kill a probe here on the map as well. Already has Blink, remember. Can get out quite easily. Yep. Keeping an eye on the natural. And this Oracle will eventually spot this uh, Stargate. And You're trying to work on the pylon, actually. It will eventually yeah, die. It's going to take it down. Yeah, the the energy on those uh, oracles can actually do very well against buildings. We learned, I think it was from Useless Facts on uh, Reddit. Thank you very much, Fear Dragon, <laughs> I believe it was. <laughs> Thank you, Fear Dragon. <laughs> Not it so useless. Dark Templars are walking across the map. Oh, he Did knows. spot them? Yeah, yeah I, he saw them. He just saw them with his stalker, actually, yeah. because he was about to sacrifice his oracle, which would have been a disaster. If it happens. Yeah, he blinked back with the Stalker while it was walking behind it, so there's no way he wouldn't have noticed. Oh, the two Oracles flew next to each other. Does Ni pull back his Dark Templar, or does he still try to go in here? Because he's going to get killed if he does. Far too ambitious. The Stalker finds it, and he will activate and kill this one off. They blink to the left-hand side to hunt that down. You can't leave. Not at all. The other one, though, managed to leave, and uh, although it never really went in, to be fair. Yeah. So... It's so funny to see an Oracle kill Pylons on the map. Nib really is uh, <laughs> originally a Terran. <laughs> yeah, doing what he can. Doing what he hating can. on those Pylons, even though they are now his as well. It's good foresight, though, really, to I mean, read into all of these things for Nib. You know, not only spotting yeah. the Pylon over the other side, limiting the production of that Stargate if it was ever to really get back into production, and also finding that Pylon up towards the top that would have tried to put on some harassment later. A Phoenix is actually going to start here by Nib. I think he wants to... Oh, I was I was wondering about this scenario. Because he has his own Oracle and he's got Dark Shrine tech, if Nib was to get a few Phoenixes like this, flies across the map, kills not just the Oracle but even the observers that are around, DTs could just finish the game. Hmm. Especially since he doesn't have his Stargate powered anymore. He couldn't have another Oracle for some detection or something. Oh, that'd be crazy. But, but remember, there is still no pylon here across the map for Nib if you wanted to be aggressive. Needs his observers. Or even the stalkers are on the map. They could get picked up here by the, these Phoenixes and killed. Good to try and alleviate himself of this Oracle, though. The Phoenix will stick around. Oh, blinks forwards, though. Okay, the trade-off in the end. Sorry, Phoenix. Uh, behind this, Nib won't come into this. He's just getting uh, a forge now for the upgrades. Robo Bay already started here for Lilbo. He's in a pretty good position. Yeah. Nib. Oh, these stalkers are going to come in actually here and try and get a probe or so. Nib's ahead uh, on probes. Yes. I don't know if it's the mules, but uh, he uses his corner boost <laughs> very well. He must be missing mules. He's like, I need those minerals. I used to have them. And we will see quite a large stalker force actually build up here for Little Bo. Um, 35 army supply against 29, but Neeb really committing to Immortals at the moment, knowing yeah. that he's going to need them. I think he's going to start scouting with Hallucination here, here in a second. Hallucinates an Oracle. He's going to see the Robo Bay here that is missing, that already went down here for Little Bo. It's just the stalkers coming out, right? There's no. No, there is an Immortal behind it, but maybe yeah? it's just a miss rally. Mm. I'm not sure if he actually means to attack. Uh, and he's going to focus that down for the cost of oh, one or two Stalkers. Garden Shield was used very late here. Just to get him out of there for an Immortal. 
no probe there to actually follow that up with a pylon or anything. So this army not going to be the strongest in terms of reinforcements. Yeah. Colossus production begins here for Lilbo. Three more gateways going down for Nib. He's feeling the heat right now. I think Nib is taking quite a, a bit of damage here from this Talkers, not, re not really killing any. And he knows that in this game he's going to need a lot of units to eventually secure another base. Lilbo gets a cannon in each middle line. He doesn't want to have to worry about some kind of DT or Oracle play, because remember, they is both available here for Nib. Focuses one Zealot, blinks everything back and just gets on out of there. Really good trade so far by Little Bo because he has that kind of stalker number. Even though he isn't reinforcing, he's still making really cost-effective use of them. Well, this might be a little bit more difficult though. Yeah, he will blink away. No extra squishy unit there as the Immortals did lead the charge. Yeah. Nib's behind by one Colossus, but uh, it's, I don't think it's the end of the world. If Lilbo was to move across the map and try and attack, I think Nib would have the time to catch up oh, on those numbers, mortal. especially since... Nib's going up to six gateways here on these two bases, whereas for Lilbo it's going to be just the five. And he's only now added two, so... Ambitious moves there by Lilbo. And, but at the same time, his Colossus number really banking up, as you say. Yeah. This, uh, this could get really problematic oh, here. Oh, an Oracle starts for Nib. Ooh. Gets another Zealot, gets on out. He might want to harass the Mineral Alliance. And I, I like how, how one single Dark Templar, by the way, is guarding the third base here of Lilbo, but Lilbo seems to know about it. I'm not sure if he sacrificed something that DT's just got one kill. So I'll just go over there and clean that up here with the Blink Stalkers. Yeah, maybe a probe did go over there to try and start something, but in the end, we'll be able to deal with that. And, and Nib starts his turn next as before, and he also got the plus two earlier. Jeez. Somehow, Nib. Nib, Nib. He's like a magician of Protoss. That early probe advantage seems to have really helped him out a lot. But yeah. at the same time, how, what are we looking at in army? Because we have three claw sight to two. Not really that game changing. Yeah. The Oracle's flying across the map, but the cannon's well positioned enough that the only weak point is going to be from the left hand side. Oh, if Nib identifies that, oh, is he, he's just going to suicide it. Okay, no. Try Pulls and back. guess what you can. Two. Fly back in maybe later on. Doesn't want to lose any stocks at the front. Oh. Okay, so the last trade was a stalker for a zealot, which, you know, really isn't favoring Little Bo there. He's bringing the majority of his army forwards, though. Yeah, Nib always starting his upgrades earlier is, is huge. And Little Bo actually is getting a War Prism of his own, so I think Little Bo, he wants to do the same attack that we saw Nib do in the previous game, where he had a slight army advantage, and then he dropped the War Prism, uh, or used the War Prism on top of, the op of his opponent's yeah. army to really help and reinforce in that fight. I'm not sure if Nib saw this coming at all. I, I don't think so. Saw some units warping in towards the third base, so he might be a little bit... Oh, uh, Nib might be caught out of position here. There is a lot of Blink Stalkers as well to play with here. Yeah, and that's already a nice folly already starting here. Little Bo's just going to go into straight to this. With double time warps hitting, those Colossi have no way to retreat out, really, without taking potential damage. Hallucinate Colossus here to tank up some of the damage, but Little Bo has a big, big army supply at the moment. With the Colossi still remaining, Warp Prism's coming in as well. If he's able to warp in some extra Zealots, with the Archons reinforcing, Nib is in a lot of problems here, Todd, as he will be chased all the way back towards the third Nexus. Those two Archons are going to tank up for days. He's trying to warp in some Zealots right underneath this. Maybe they can change the tide of it, but uh, with the Colossi dying off, it's going to be difficult. Yeah, Nib's trying to hold down here, but he's lost pretty much everything that he had here in terms of Colossus. And that third base not even mining anymore. One single Zealot's going down to his on his probes and uh, killing all of them. And just retreating on back those pros, back to Twitter, and there you go, GG, Little Bo will take the series. It was a shaky one, but in the end, he takes it 2-1. to one. It was very interesting games, actually, to see, like, that whoever is ahead in supply when that third base is going up, they attack, no matter what, because they know yeah. that they need to be making something happen, rather than just kind of sit back and turtle, and uh, usually it's not always the case. In a lot of those games, if you're behind, you kind of feel like you have, you have to wait. Wait for your opponent to make a mistake. And uh, in this case, I think attacking was just great because it worked out pretty much every single time. Yeah, that, that <laughs> looks like the way to go. Uh, little Bo, uh, you know, really sees the advantage early on there. Took a small little bit of damage, but nothing too uh, consequential. And now pushes himself on into the winner's game. So. Good start from Little Bo to kind of mount his movement forward towards that kind of BlizzCon chance, but certainly in PvP, not not what he exactly wants. He wants more confident wins. But that man on screen right there, Neeb, got to give a tip of the hat to him because he's Protoss versus Protoss, not only against Stardust, but even here against Little Bo. Pretty good. 
not bad for a turn. Oh well, originally <laughs> not, he, he, he's pretty good. I think yeah, I yeah. find him very impressive in PvP. Uh, actually, I wonder about his other matchups. It'd be really nice mm -hmm. if we saw him play against uh, Shanna later, later on. Yeah, that's that will be the true test of who is able to do best uh, in that respective matchup, considering they both played the opposing race before. Uh, but for now, go guys, we can go over to the analysis desk with Apollo and the lads. Thank you very much, Kolaris. Joined here by Lilbo and, of course, Sam. You took the win. Um, did that go as you expected it to go? A lot of people looked at this and said, okay, well, Lilbo's going to smash this group today. He's going to go 4 0 overall, but he took a map away from you. Yeah, because I think, uh, I think I'm not good enough in PvP, and the matchup is a bit volatile, so. And he played a bit better than expected. Uh, I expected him to go a bit more cheesy or. Like taking some risks, like if we put us pretty much, but he plays safe and I'm not that good in very long macro games, so I lost. Do you, is it difficult to go into a group that you can't find too much information on players about? Nee, we don't really know too much about him in, in recent history, of course. And the same can be said for Shanna a little bit later on too. Is this difficult when you come into a group like that or you don't really care? It's just all about you and how good you're doing. Uh, I knew Nim was pretty good and he played uh, a lot of macro games. But about Shanna, <laughs> I know he's a bit cheesy and I don't even think he can take any map from me. Like. <laughs> Even if he's a bit lucky or something, so like I don't know him, but I, I think I don't need to. Okay, Sam, you got some questions for for Lobo on that series? Got a few. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, game number two, obviously, you lost that game, but after his first initial attack, and you managed to, I, came, I think you kept like three of your Colossus alive, uh, and you kept your third base up. Uh, he didn't really saturate his too much. Did you feel like you was in a good position then? Because I thought that you was. But it seemed like he still had an, a bit of a bit of an advantage, still going uh, going after that towards obviously the later stages of that game. Like, how did you feel, uh, obviously being in that situation? Um, well, I was not really sure what was happening. Like, I couldn't tell if he had a lot of probs on his third base or not. So I was like, yeah, okay, we just fought. So we hope I'm not too far behind that we just play like uh, like nothing happened, and that's what I did. Okay, and game number three as well, uh, you went for a proxy Stargate. Some might say that's a bit of a ballsy move to go in kind of the deciding game. Did you do that because you noticed that he was scouting with his mothership core, or did you plan that from the beginning? Yeah, it was because I, I like this build, and I knew um, he scouted two times with his mothership core, even on Cactus Valley, which is a four players map. Yeah. But uh, after he saw the proxy Stargate, I was like, Okay, I will try to face, so I couldn't boost a lot uh, the warp gate, which can mean it, uh, it's very fast DT. And, well, the Oracle did pretty okay. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, Sam. Thank you, Rich We'll look forward to your next game in the winner's match. Lilbo will be playing in the winner's match a little bit later on. A couple more series to go yet. We're going to go to a very quick break, but when we return, the German player, Kung Fu Panda, is going to take on China as they come to Europe for the first time in Shanna.